<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Into Dot Training, the Stephen Adams Show with Jake and Johannes. You've probably seen Johannes Ooh. in a few of the previous videos as well. Uh, today we are going to talk about autopilot, what it is, what it isn't. Uh, Johannes does have a nice little short PowerPoint that we're going to take a, a peek at right away. Uh, if you want to share that out, Johannes. I will. Browse OneDrive, autopilot. Bam. So, what does? So it seems to be a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings and whatnot about what autopilot actually does. So to keep it short and simple, autopilot, it basically takes your device through the out of box experience, it, which basically prompts you for a few questions like the privacy options, um, keyboard layout, language. It can, it can answer those for you. It doesn't have to do it though. Secondly, it take it forces your device into a managed state and forces your users to use their organizational credentials to sign in. They are not giving the option to sign in with their Hotmail account or whatever else they might have. Gmail, anything, yep. Yeah, so it's, it's a very streamlined, funneled experience. That's the what big it does. point there is the managed state part. Yes. It forces you into your mobile device management of choice. It could be in, uh, in tune. It could be something else. It doesn't really matter. The, the whole point is that you're forced into it. You can't not do it. So let's move. So any questions, Jake, or should we hop over? I think we're good to hop to the next slide here. Woohoo. So let's this one. So what does Autopilot does not do? So Autopilot does not actually install any applications. It doesn't configure your device. It doesn't add data to your the device, like not the not corporate data in the traditional sense. Mm -hmm. Because that's handled by your mobile device management. Autopilot only streamlines you into that state. That's it. It's about as simple as it gets. Easy so, easy. So now the third slide before we move into our uh, live demo. This is a slide that maybe a lot of you have already seen. So you can see the first step, you have the device vendor who, well, manufactures the device or, and then sells it to you. And they might be adding it to your autopilot tenant and then they deliver that device to you and then it gets deployed. That's where autopilot ends. So you can see between the deploy and ready for business, steps on the slide um, somewhere in between your mobile device management authority takes over that's where autopilot and everything else yep. yeah and then intune takes over and does whatever ever you configured it to do so basically half of this slide is uh, the first half is autopilot and the second half is the, Your the MBM solution, yeah. aka Intune, in this particular case. Yep. With that being said, we will pop over into the demo side of things. If I can find my box here, there we go. We've got that. So we talked about, you know, getting your devices enrolled, things like that, like what autopilot actually is. There are several different approaches you can take from a deployment side of things. Um, if we log into our Intune tenant, in this case, endpoint.microsoft.com, go to our devices and then Windows, and then within device enrollment, you do have these deployment profile options. This is where you can dictate those different, you know, mentality, like what's going to happen during that autopilot experience once it's been registered within your tenant. There are several different options in here. So as an example, we'll go ahead and create just a brand new uh, profile here. We'll name it just like Win10 uh autopilot you know you can really name this anything if i could type you know it is friday <laughs> i apologize um give it a nice description things like that um uh, in this particular case we're not going to worry well, about converting the target you have devices. an illegal you have an illegal character in the name oh i do 
Hang on, why don't they remove that? All right, there we go. We're good on that front. But yeah, so in this case, we're not going to worry about any like uh, converting targeted devices to autopilot or anything like that. Uh, we will hit the next button here. But this is where you configure that Ubi like screen. I'm like, what do you want them to actually see? So earlier, Johannes was talking about you know hiding the keyboard, setting the default language, things like that. You know, you can make the user select the language, or you can manually change it to whatever you'd like it to be. Um, things like that. Other things that you'll see in here uh, that might be of interest is the actual deployment mode. So uh, this can confuse a lot of people because there's user driven and self deploying. A lot of times people think, oh, self deploying, that sounds great. You know, let's just let's push it out there. The problem with self deploying is there's no prompt or anything for the user to sign in. So you can think of it as like they're just getting a base account with a random password that gets generated. Uh, you're strictly really going to want to use those for kiosk devices or devices that do not belong to a specific user. Think, yes. for example, kiosk devices, conference rooms, uh, digital signage, that kind of thing. Exactly. The next one is going to be like joined Azure AD as Azure AD join or hybrid Azure AD join. Johannes and I have to be very big fans of strictly Azure AD joined. Yes. If you can't avoid hybrid, avoid it. With that being said, you also have the ability to come in here and you know show or hide the uh, service terms or licensing terms from Microsoft. You've got some privacy settings as well. Um, these are realistically the, the biggest ones you're going to want to be looking at is the deployment mode and then the join type. Everything else in here pretty optional. You know, you get like device name, template, things like that. Um, you had something, Johannes? Um, there are. There's one small caveat. If you hide for example, the privacy setting that automatically sets a enforces a specific default. Mm -hmm. Even though it's uh, selected to show it, that doesn't show you the administrator these defaults. They just get shown to the user. This can affect things like location and time zone, I think that sort of thing. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that if you use the like, it's not a big deal for your users to select some of this stuff. Like for them to select their language and their keyboard, why do you care? Like if somebody wants to use a Danish keyboard, let them. It's two clicks on their part and you don't have yeah. to worry about it at that point. Basically, they have done this on their iPhone or, their, or on their Android phone for years and doing it on Windows is no different. Absolutely. The other thing uh, within this, you know, specific Ubi section is this uh, allow white glove during the Ubi. This is going to be more on your side, the administration side. Like if you want to pre-provision the device for the user, um, we will show some screenshots here in a second that mm -hmm. cover all these different scenarios. Uh, in fact, I am actually going to pop into that. So as an example, what happens if you were to do like a user driven doesn't necessarily mean what type that you're, you know, going through and the user went through all the different options here. So they've gone through the autopilot experience. After that, this next screenshot I'm pulling up, you've probably seen before. This is the ESP profile. Again, this is not autopilot. This is what happens immediately after autopilot if you decide to have an ESP page. And this is where you'll see like the device prep, device setup, account setup. The user can follow along as it's doing all of its different things. Now, if you went that self-deploying route, what would happen when the device boots up and you connect to the internet is you would see this well, you know, welcome to your organization. You know, assuming you set up company branding, which you definitely should have already configured, uh, but you see your logo, things like that. During the white glove approach, what you would do, uh, I believe it's, is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Johannes, but I think it's like F5, like five uh, times no, you, during the boot. No, you click the, um, the, the, the Windows button on five, your yeah. keyboard five times. There we go. Um, so what there happens is, during... Oh, there's one caveat I would like to add is that your device must have TPM 2.0 for this okay. to work. Mm. Because this is basically self-deploy but it also allows the user to sign in like it becomes a one on one device. Exactly. So once you do hit that five times, you'll see this, you know, option to autopilot provision the device. Once you select that, the next screen you're going to see is this autopilot configuration section. 
and you'll be able to hit provision from there and provision the device for the user. The next set of options that you'll see is what happens if you know a user goes to say Best Buy, things like that, and it's not autopilot enrolled. They start that device up right away. The first thing that they'll be see, seeing during the UBI is an option to set up for personal use or to set up as an organization. Now, the user can come in here and say set up for organization. What you should know though with this step, because you may be thinking, oh, this is going to be the easiest way to autopilot my devices. The problem with going this route is you don't get to deploy a deployment profile to those devices. What that means in this case is the user has complete control over that device. Yes, it does say your organization will have full control, but when I say the user has full control, I mean they are a local administrator on that box. So generally, you know, the, the methodology is don't give people admin unless they, you know, need it, you know, for a specific time frame. Go the standard approach. Um, so if you don't want your users to be local administrators, avoid this option. Additionally, uh, let's pop this one open. If the user were to get an AP enrolled device that has a device configuration sent out to it with the user driven approach, this is the screen that they would be prompted with immediately after selecting their Wi Fi or connectivity options. And if from here. The, so, just to butt in a little, um, if you have assigned a user to the device, they will be greeted by, by name, which is mm -hmm. a as it's a nice experience, and they only have to type in their password. They don't have to type in their username. It is kind of cool. A little extra step on your part, but it does make the user experience a little nicer. It also locks down the device to this specific user. So mm -hmm. if you're handing out different devices, like a fancy laptop for some department head and less fancy devices for his minions, and they're sending it off to a branch office or something, you can make sure that only a specific person gets the, their their specific their allotted device. Yep. Awesome. So again, you know, sign in, or if you assign the user to it, it'll be greeted. Type in your password, and from there, that ESP side of things. Again, that's what happens after autopilot will begin. Um, another thing you might be curious about is like onboarding devices that are already existing within your environment. Like let's say you have config manager in your environment and you want to convert these devices. There's a couple different approaches you can take with that. Uh, Microsoft has some pretty good docs centered around it, uh, but the easiest way is to create one of those, you know, an ESP page or one of those uh, actual uh, deployment profiles that we were talking about earlier. And then via the Microsoft graph, you can communicate, download that data, which gets represented as a JSON file. And from there, push that out to your machines during OSD. So you basically be re-imaging your devices. Um, and then they would be able to get that deployment profile without even having to register it on the autopilot side of things. And then immediately after that, they would be greeted by that lovely welcome to your organization name page and be good to go. There is one thing that is not when you start testing this or doing this in production. If you add a device to autopilot through the uh, convert option, which Jay can show us now if he can. Oh. Yeah, yeah, this one, convert all targeted device to autopilot. So if you use this and then for some reason you delete a device that has gone through this process, it will never ever get converted again. You will have to manually add it. Mm -hmm. This is not documented anywhere, by the way. So what would you recommend having that setting set at then? Uh, it's personal I would, preference. I think it's personal preference. It just mm -hmm. depends. But, but yeah, so that is essentially the different scenarios that you run in in the autopilot universe. It's pretty simplistic once you think about it. We just wanted to clear up some of the confusion around what it is and what it isn't. Hopefully we were able to do that for you in this short little video. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, feel free to leave them down in the, the comments down below. We'll include links out to all the different documentation pages uh, and then also uh, links out to Johannes and his Twitter page and everything else as well. Thanks again, mm -hmm. Johannes. Appreciate it. Yes. All right. Have a good one, all everyone. Right.